Welcome once again to our podcast. This, uh, my name is Dwayne Dunaway. We are so glad that you're joining us. Anytime you take time to listen to what we have to say rather than, you know, watching television or reading books about the Loch Ness Monster, we're glad that we, we appreciate that. We're glad to have you with us. Now, one of the things that we do here, um, and we do at our website, which is DwayneDunaway.com, and we do uh, videos that we put on TikTok or on Instagram, and then a podcast that we are slowly but surely getting the hang of and uh, plan to continually bring you. But one thing you'll see that we, we we're we doing and trying to do consistently is to uh, educate and inform people in what the Bible actually teaches, because... Uh, the average person who has been influenced by uh, human religion and organized religion and denominations would be shocked to find out that uh, so many things that they've heard are not actually taught in the Bible. And I tell people all the time, you know, what is bothering you may not be anything that the Bible teaches. It might be just something that you've been told that the Bible teaches. What Christians say and what the Bible says are not always the same. And there are a lot of people who claim to be Christians who wouldn't know Jesus, uh, you know, from Santa Claus. So we need to be realistic uh, about things. That doesn't mean we know everything. It doesn't mean I know everything. It just means that I'll give you a, an alternative voice and um, you can uh, make up your mind for yourself what, what you believe uh, God is teaching you. Because when you... Um, give account of yourself to God, and when your life is, is judged by God, it's not going to have anything to do with what men have said. Uh, those people that kicked you out of the church, they can't keep you out of heaven. Those people that have hurt you by uh, their hatred or their, uh, their prejudices, uh, their racism, um, their indoctrination uh, that is not based on Scripture, they... Um, they have, they have no say about whether or not you have a relationship with God. You can ignore them completely. You can, you can even uh, pretend that they don't even exist. I mean, you need to pray for them and you need to love them and you don't need to stoop to their level and let hatred uh, form in your heart. But as far as, uh, as far as influencing you and the way that you think, you don't have to pay any attention at all to them. The only one that matters is God. And the only book that matters, as far as what God has said, we believe, is the Bible. And that doesn't mean there's not a lot of books you can't learn truth from. But, but what I'm saying is, if you've been told something that just does not sound like a God of love, it does not sound like the person of Jesus Christ, um, there's a good chance it's probably not even taught in the Bible. I'm going to give you some examples of, uh, of what we're talking about. Um, you would probably be shocked to know that uh, the Bible nowhere tells people to go to church or to attend a building of any kind. Um, these churches that you see on, uh, the, you know, as you drive down the street through the average town in our country, um, you see churches here, you see churches there, you'll see church here, you see Pentecostals and Presbyterians and Baptists and Church of Christ and, and um, you know, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And you'll see, you know, just all, you know, the, just denomination, denomination after denomination after denomination, one right after the other. And a person looks around and says, well, man, there's so many different churches. Which one is right? None of them. Yeah, you heard me. None of them. Now, they're all right about some things. But they're all wrong about other things, and not one of them was formed by the Bible. In other words, not one, you don't read about a single one of them in the Bible. Not a single denomination is in the Bible. And I don't think there's a Bible teacher anywhere who would not admit that. If you went and asked him, is, are there denominations in the New Testament? No. Well, guess what that means? That means that you don't have to be a part of one. Because if it's not in the New Testament, if it, if it came later than the New Testament, it doesn't. It, it, it isn't binding on you. It has no relevance to your life unless you make it so. Here is how easy it is to be a Christian, a true Christian, uh, as far as what the New Testament teaches. Churches are simply groups of believers, and they can be two or more. Jesus said, where two or more are gathered together, I'm there in the midst of you. Think about what that means. Instead of being made to feel guilty that you don't get up and go 
and sit through an assembly somewhere in a big church or in a church building, you could find someone of like precious faith, as the Bible says, find a fellow believer and just start having church in your home. Yes, you could. You could start worshiping God right there, just the two of you. Now, as you get to know God and you get excited about the message of God, you'll probably invite some other people to join you. But you don't need anybody to sanction you to have a church. You don't have to go to any denominational body to say, is it okay if we start a church here? Now, if you're part of a denomination, you have to get permission. Um, you know, if, if you're going to be a part of an organized man-made group, then no, you can't just start one of those anywhere. But those don't matter. In other words, those aren't in the Bible. The church that is in the Bible, the church that Jesus established, the church that Jesus built is as simple as meeting together and, uh, and loving Christ. You know, the house church movement is very, very popular, especially in, in a lot of other countries. But even here in America, there's a lot of house churches meeting. You don't hear about them because they don't put up signs and they don't uh, cause trouble and they don't tell people what uh, political candidate to vote for. And, you know, they're just, they're just loving God and loving one another the way the Bible teaches. Um, so if you're discouraged by the fact, you know, I've told people all this time, I say, you know, you're going to church anywhere. They say, well, I haven't found one that I'm comfortable with. I say, start one. And then they look at me like, what? Start one. If you don't like any churches, if there's no church around that you feel comfortable in, that you feel welcoming, uh, that you feel welcomes people, that you feel is uh, truly Christian, truly following Christ, start one. Yeah, you can do that. The Bible does allow that. Now, the Bible teaches us that we're supposed to meet with each other. We're supposed to encourage each other. Hebrews 10.25 is a verse that people will use to try to tell you you got to go to church. Hebrews 10.25 says, Do not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but exhort one another. And um, people say, See, you're supposed to not forsake the assembling, as the King James says. Don't give up meeting together. You're supposed to go to church. No, that meeting together can be in my living room. Um, I can invite one other person over and meet together. Now, it, we don't even understand what the purpose of that verse is. Why did God tell us to meet together? He didn't tell us to meet together so that we could check some list, uh, you know, to put a check by some legalistic rule that he's given us. He told us not to give up meeting together just because you're going to fall away from the faith if you don't encourage yourself with the fellowship of other believers. A lone ranger Christian, a person who never interacts with other uh, believers, there could, there could be exceptions to this because I think there are exceptions in the Bible. But generally speaking, a person who tries to do it all on his own is uh, is not going to stay with it. You need encouragement from other people, but you don't need encouragement from hypocrites. And you don't need the fellowship of people who pretend to be Christians who are not. And I'm not saying everybody in, in these organized churches are that way, but I'm saying there's a lot of it in there. And if you want to bypass it altogether, start a church. Start a church. That's right. How would I do that? Follow Christ, find one other person who wants to follow Christ, and you two get together and love God. Tell him you love him. Sing to him, pray to him, talk to him. And um, and then love each other. Talk about how you can help each other in this Christian walk. Share your uh, struggles with each other and pray for each other. And guess what you have just done? You've just had church. All right, so remember that. That sounds too good to be true. That sounds too simple. And that's only because you have been brainwashed by man-made religion. The Christianity of the Bible is simple, and it's that simple. You mean I could start my own church and don't have to have any letters, don't have to have a, 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 a degree in theology? Yes, I'm telling you, according to the Bible, that's exactly what you can do. Um, and we'll talk more about that as time goes on. But, you know, I, hopefully, you know, we, you hear some thought-provoking stuff here that might help you. And all we ask is that you um, consider what we're saying and, and see if maybe some of the things that you've been taught are not true, because a lot of it's probably not. Thank you for joining us. Hope you join us again next time.